So here in the Twin Otter again, we're just going to take off and look at a few anomalies with the autopilot with a view to seeing what we can do to fix them. We've been getting used to this new autopilot, new in the sense that it's not the same as the one in the Twin Otter Extended. We have the KAP 140 autopilot, which is based on the default Asobo autopilot system. And as we know, there are plenty of anomalies. Some of these are down to Aerosoft implementation now being worked on. I'm not going to moan about that. Today, I'm going to moan about some things that I don't think will be fixed because they're, they seem to be features that are lacking in the Asobo implementation itself. So we're just taking off out of Queenstown here. I'm going to try and do this with the mouse so you can see what I'm doing initially. Um, so I'm just heading straight out. I've dropped my mouse across, that's not going to help. I'm just going to put us straight onto autopilot by pressing the AP button. So we go into vertical speed mode. You immediately notice that the vertical speed captured is zero. The vertical speed on the vertical speed indicator shows that we level off from that climb. That's not what's supposed to happen. With the KP140 was supposed to capture the vertical speed that's active when we switch the autopilot on. So that's the first thing. That's the um, most important thing that uh, we want to try and fix. We'll um, just comment on a few other things as we go. We should be in roll mode when we go into autopilot. Now sometimes this seems inconsistent. I don't really understand what's going on here. We sometimes see roll ROL here on the autopilot panel. You don't always see that. Something else that we see, if we just go on and off autopilot a couple of times. Um, so we're off now. If we go into a, a bank and then we switch autopilot on again. Again, that roll mode is supposed to happen. We're supposed to get wings level. That sometimes seems to happen and sometimes it doesn't. So we're stuck in this bank now. If I try and level us off and then let it go. I'm just checking that's not me on the rudder that mistake. It seems to go back into that bank. Now that is something that we could find useful. That is more like an attitude hold mode. Um, so if we were to come off autopilot, let's just see if that's consistent. Um, we were to go into a steep left hand bank and then put the autopilot on. Does it hold that? Well it seems to, if I try and fight that with the control yoke. Well if you fight it too much it kicks you off the autopilot, that's uh, what's happened there. Let's just try that again to the right. Onto autopilot. It's holding that bank. If you watch the flight director, it's come back to centred, so that tells us it's doing, well, I think that tells us it's doing that deliberately, or it's, um, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't think it's doing anything wrong. Um, so, just again, without trying to fight it too much, if I try and fight it, level the wings, you can see the flight director bar is out to the right, so it, it thinks definitely thinks we still want to be in that role somewhere in its tiny brain and it goes back to that. So that's fine if that's consistent and that's what it does because that's useful, that's an attitude hold mode. Now does that work in the vertical? We don't think so because if I put a steep ascent, let's say 2,000 feet per minute ascent, click autopilot on We can see it's gone into vertical speed mode. It's actually selected 300 feet per minute down. I don't know why it's done that. And in fact, it doesn't seem to be holding. That doesn't seem to reflect what's actually happening. I'm going to come off autopilot just for a second. It's going to crash into the hillside.
So you can see there's some strange things happening with this autopilot that we don't quite understand. But by and large, what seems to happen consistently is, in terms of vertical speed, even though we're in a climb now, when we go into autopilot, we get vertical speed mode as we should, but we get a vertical speed of zero. Next thing I want to talk about is what happens when we're on altitude hold mode. We're going to go into altitude hold mode now. We're on altitude hold and we're holding 4,200 feet. To come off altitude hold mode and onto vertical speed mode, we press Alt again. So that's put us into vertical speed mode. Now we can press the up and down buttons. Let's say we want to ascend. Five hundred feet per minute. Then we go over here and we see that that's indeed dialed in for us on the vertical speed indicator. And that all seems to work fine, but it's not consistent. Okay, let's try that again. So uh, on altitude hold mode, we're holding four thousand five hundred feet. We're going to go into vertical speed mode by pressing Alt. Vertical speed is selected, and the vertical speed is zero. We press up couple of times. Now what should have happened there is we dialed in a 200 foot or 100 foot per minute vertical speed. That didn't happen. We went straight back onto altitude hold. Let's try it again. I click Alt, click up two or three times. Again we flipped straight back onto altitude. Click Alt again. So we're in vertical speed mode, up, and that time it worked. So we dial in 600 feet per minute. Let's click out to hold 4,600. Let it settle for a little while. That's a nice view of the airport just there. Okay. So there we are again, let's try clicking Alt We're on vertical speed mode. Let's try and go down this time. Again, it's flipping straight back onto Alt. Vertical speed mode, down, straight back onto Alt. Third time, same deal. So there's something wrong there, something inconsistent, or something I don't understand about how that's supposed to work. I'm pretty sure I do understand this and it's not working. Incidentally, I have noted if you try this in the default 172, um, it seems to work more consistently. I can't remember if I've actually got it to fail in that particular function at all. But we're not flying the default 172, we're flying this. So that's another problem we'd like to be able to fix if possible. So can we fix these things and, and if so, how do we go about doing it? Well, the first thing to, to say is that, although I've been demonstrating this by clicking the buttons in the virtual cockpit, I am using my hardware controls to control the autopilot. If I just demonstrate that very briefly, uh, if I just go on and off autopilot, I'm not going to click the virtual cockpit buttons, I'm going to click my hardware button to go off autopilot now, and then I'll click again to go on. So that's simply mapping the buttons using spad.next is what I'm using. If we go and have a look at that, this is where we do it. And if I just look at my, um, in fact I won't look at my autopilot on off button, I'll look at my heading hold button since that's somewhat more innocuous. So this is the button here, if I click it you'll see I have an action there on button press, and if I edit that event, you see all it does is it sends an event to the simulator, which is called CAP140 push heading. Uh, and that's a standard event that seems to be exposed by, let me see, so it's exposed by FlySim 2020 as a standard event. In fact, there's a button, if you watch closely there, you see there's a bunch of them. And these are the events that we can conveniently map 
to our hardware and there's one for each button on the CAP140 and it should behave just like pushing the buttons in the virtual co cockpit. And by and large it does do that but with the same anomalies that we just witnessed. So what can we do instead? Well taking the, the most important one is the how to capture the vertical speed when we activate the autopilot. So let's have a look at what we actually do. I'm going to just pause this for a moment in case I run into anything. And we're going to go into spad.next. And I'm going to change profiles. Uh, well, in fact, before I change profiles, I'll just show you that. So my autopilot on-off toggle is this one. And it, so all it does is it sends the push AP event. If I look at my heading hold, push heading, nav hold, push nav. It just Essentially, each of these buttons just calls the appropriate sim event. Um, and it behaves more or less as you expect, but with the anomalies we've observed. If I go and change my profile, I'll show you what I've done differently. So I'll go back to my autopilot activate. Now you remember we only had one event here before it was a toggle event. We always sent we always sent the CAP 140 push AP event. So that just toggled the autopilot on and off. We can't do that now. We want to do something different when we activate the autopilot than we do when we deactivate. When we deactivate the autopilot, we just want to call that push AP function as before. But when we activate the autopilot, we want to do something different. So we have to detect whether the autopilot is active before we press that button and if so do something different. So if we look at this event we've got a condition. If the, so if we're looking at a sim event which is autopilot master and uh, we look at that again it's just a variable exposed by sim connect autopilot master it's a boolean value which is on or off. So based on that if autopilot master is off we do this extra bunch of processing here. If it's if autopilot master is on, we don't do any of this and we just do that single autopilot toggle event. But if so what we do here is we're detecting if we're going on to autopilot. And the reason we do that is we want to prior to activating the autopilot we want to sneak a peek at what the current vertical speed is. We do that first, we get the speed, I'll look at this in a little bit more detail in a second, so we grab the vertical speed and we save it somewhere, then we activate the autopilot, then we call this function APVSVAR set English, which is a sim function, just look at that, again it's a sim connect function, which means it's probably the same as we had in FS10 and prepared. This set English, uh, that means it's in imperial units, feet in other words. Uh, there is a set metric, so it would be in metres. So in a nutshell what we do is we grab the vertical speed, we activate the autopilot which as you saw sets the vertical speed to zero, then we call this function to set the vertical speed back to <laughs> whatever it was previous to activating the autopilot and that happens quickly enough that we don't even notice a glitch there. If we activate the autopilot in a climb we end up staying in that climb and holding it in vertical speed mode. Now I need to say something else about this. This way of programming things in spad.next is it takes a bit of getting used to. It's a bit of a faff. Um, you know the, on the one hand everything's on menus. You don't have to get your hands dirty in scripting. Uh, on the other hand, it makes it painfully difficult to do anything programmatic. Uh, all the functionality more or less is there to be able to do it, but it's painful. It's much easier doing it in Lua with FSUI PC or something like that. I say it's easier, I mean it's a trade-off. It's easier in some ways, certainly more powerful. But to do that, uh, we have to do two different things. So uh, we look at this, how to grab the vertical speed. 
We're going to save it in a local variable that I've created, which I've called AAV speed. And to, to create a local variable, all you do is if you select your variable here, you can just click this button down here, new local variable. Um, I've been a bit inconsistent with the this word here, session, and then you'll see on this variable down here, global. You, you can, the, the, this is about the scope of the of the local variable. I, I was tinkering with this and I hadn't really appreciated you could have different scopes. So global session and there's profile as well. You can go and fiddle with that for yourself. So we're going to grab a value and we're going to stuff it into our local variable called vSpeed and then if we come to the other side of the autopilot activation and look at that action you'll see that we're going to use that saved vSpeed as a parameter to this vertical speed set function. So that's very straightforward. Now one little wrinkle here that we've had to sort out is this function, this APVS var set English requires the vertical speed in feet per minute and unfortunately that isn't available as far as I can tell in any of the sim variables. The sim variable returns it in feet per second. Now if this was a Lua program all we do is we multiply that by 60 when we did this line here but as you see there's no way to, to do that. We can't do arithmetic there's no way to do arithmetic in that assignment. So you might think we're stumped, but there is a way around that, which is we can create something called, it's like a local variable, but it's called an expression. So if we cancel out of that, and we go over to this thing over here, which is add-ons, and we look at expressions, you see I've created a bunch of custom expressions here, and the one of interest at the moment is this get VS FPM. So if we edit that, what that allows us to do is grab a data value, stick it in this box, and then we can do arithmetic on it in this box. So we're creating a function here essentially if you if you're a programmer of any sort. We're creating a function called AA get vertical speed feet per minute. And inside that function we're doing it by retrieving a data value which is simconnect vertical speed. Uh, ooh, can I find that? Vertical speed, and you'll see the units are feet per second. And then, so we multiply by 60, that turns into feet per minute. So, whenever we access this function, which we access just as if it was a variable, we get feet per minute instead of feet per second. Hope that made sense. So, if we take another look at that event, you'll see that. When I retrieve that value, I'm retrieving it from that custom function. That, that looks like it's a data value, and it looks in this list just like a local variable, but it's a function, or an expression, as spad.next likes to call it. So you can see that's a real tap dance around the houses just to um, be able to do a bit of arithmetic. So if we reverse out of all that, and uh, we go back into the sim, let's just see that makes any difference. So we're flying along, we're not on autopilot, we're in a approximately 800 feet per minute ascent, it's about 8 on 900 feet per minute, we're going to autopilot now and you can see on the autopilot display we're in vertical speed mode sure enough and well you can't see the number now because it flips back to altitude but if you look at the VSI we're on 800 feet per minute and if I were to press my up and down buttons to increase that and get 800, 900, 1000 again that's going to bump up on the vertical speed indicator if I press my down buttons 8765 and you see that sorts itself out on the VSI so if we go back onto altitude hold Okay, I'm just pressing my hardware buttons here, I'm not messing about with the mouse. I'm going to level off. If we try that again, if we come off autopilot, set up a, a descent about 1900 feet per minute, go on to autopilot. So it's captured that as well, 1800 feet per minute. And so we're in vertical speed mode, sure enough. 
we're holding that downward descent. So if I click the button up, I'm going to dial it off to let's say 900. Away from these mountains, and you can see the vertical speeds settle down at 900. So we fix that problem hopefully once and for all, and we get a much more usable autopilot that captures the vertical speed when we turn it on. So what about that other problem with the inconsistent behaviour of the altitude hold toggle? Well we can have a go at that as well, so if we flip back out to spadnup.next have a look at that. So basically we're going to do a very similar thing. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to, for the buttons that I've mapped to the up and down, so these two here, buttons for the autopilot, we're going to look at them. So that's the down button, let's look at the Let's look at the up button first. First thing to note is we have an unconditional event which is to, to send that push up event. Um, so we want to do that consistently um, eventually but we also want to do a conditional action before that depending on the setting of something else. This, um, those buttons have dual function or they're supposed to have. When you're on autopilot and you're in altitude hold mode the up and down buttons well, they don't do what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to nudge the, the held altitude up and down by, is it 20 feet per press? Now, they, they don't seem to do that. They seem to do something along the lines of, they'll allow you to nudge the, the value once by 100 feet and then back again. <laughs> don't know what sense that makes. But uh, nevertheless, it's supposed to do something specific. So we need to detect whether we're on altitude hold when we press the up and down buttons and if we do we just do the normal button press and nothing else. If we're in vertical speed we don't really know we're in vertical speed mode we know that we're not in altitude hold mode by this condition so autopilot altitude lock that's a value a, a sim variable so if we look at that condition it's a, it's a sim connect variable so if we're not on altitude hold mode, we assume we're in vertical speed mode, then we do something else. We've got another one of these conditions. What we want to check is, um, I suspect what's happening here, I'm not sure about this, but this kind of works pragmatically. What seems to be happening is, in fact I just need to sort of back out, I need to say something a little bit about how this KAP altitude hold business is supposed to work. So we have the all singing, all dancing version of the KAP 140, which means it's a two axis device but it also features altitude pre-select. I'm, I'm selecting the altitude with my altitude selector knob here, um, which is a bit glitchy, which is why it's fitted by itself now. Uh, now there is an arm button as well. Now the arm button is not functional, although you can press it. It seems that the arm button is not functional in the sim. Um, but the, the auto arm function if you read a genuine cap 140 manual is it's kind of fiddly anyway. So when you're dialing that altitude in it's it's pre-selecting a target altitude that it will acquire and it will also give you altitude alerts for but it'll only acquire that altitude if you initiate a climb or a descent to it using the vertical speed mode. Now the problem with that is in the sim version of this autopilot that target altitude seems to remain armed constantly. And so I suspect what's happening is if you press the ALT button to flip out of altitude hold mode into vertical speed mode, as soon as that vertical speed starts to, mo starts to move, in other words you start to climb or descent, the autopilot thinks it's acquired its target altitude and it goes back onto altitude hold mode. Now this is how it's kind of how it's supposed to work. Um, if you scrutinise how the altitude alerts work, once you get within 300 feet of the target altitude, the altitude alert well, it's supposed to be the altitude alert light indicator is supposed to go out. 
but also the mode sets itself to altitude hold with the target altitude. Let's just demonstrate that. I'm talking a lot here. Let's demonstrate what I'm talking about. So just to try and demonstrate that, we're cruising along on autopilot. We're holding 7,800 feet. I've pre-selected 8,500 feet up here. Uh, we should also see that down here on the autopilot display. And if we go on to Hopefully this is going to work. Vertical speed mode. We'll dial it up at 500 feet per minute. We want to watch the altitude alert. In fact, we won't do that because that doesn't work very well. But if we watch, we're in vertical speed mode. At 7,000. 8,000. It's got 500 feet to go. When we pass 300 feet to go, which is about 100 feet from now, this display will change out of vertical speed mode into altitude hold mode. And 8,500 is the held altitude. You see that word alert there? That will go out. And right about, well, maybe 200 feet to go, not 300 to go. I've made a mistake here. <laughs> We'll see. So that word alert should go out any second now. There it goes. The light should go out over here as well on the altitude. It's pre selected, doesn't it? You see, we flip to altitude mode and we're slowly converging on that 8,500 feet as the held altitude. So my theory is if we press out now and immediately try to go up, that same capture process seems to be happening pathologically. It shouldn't happen, but the, well, it didn't happen that time. So I don't know. You see, it's not consistent. But we're going to pretend it is consistent and that that's the problem. And, uh, we're going to do something to fix it. And the thing we're doing to fix it is a bit of a horrible hack. We're going to just uh, say if we're on vertical speed mode, because we're not on altitude mode, and if we are within 300 feet of our pre-selected altitude, perhaps arguably from what I've just seen that should be 200 feet, then we're going to do something different, which is we're going to change this this is a hack this is this is not really elegant at all but we're going to because we're within 300 feet of our pre-selected altitude we, we predict it's going to go wrong so we actually change that pre-selected altitude to be something greater than 300 feet away from where we are by convention i've decided if we're selecting an ascent i.e we're pressing the up button we set the altitude the pre-selected altitude 300 feet below where we currently are. If we're dialing in a descent by pressing the down button, we set the pre-selected altitude to 300 feet above where we are. So that allows us to just enter a, if you like, a uninterrupted ascent or an un uninterrupted descent from wherever we are. And again, I won't go into the detail of this too much, but I'm using another one of those functions to do the arithmetic. You know, we're we're if we look at the expression. You know, we want to determine the altitude, then subtract 300 feet from it. We can't do arithmetic in the main programming display, so again, we have to do it in a one of these. I mean, again, these should be called functions, not expressions. So, alt, AA alt minus 300 is a function which retrieves the indicated altitude from Sim Connect, that's in feet, subtracts 300 from it, and returns that. So, we can use this anywhere we can use a variable. Likewise, I've got a plus 300, does the same thing, but it adds 300 feet to it. Um, the other thing we need is to, when we have that condition, to decide whether we're within 300 feet of the target altitude. 
sorry, the, yeah, so the selected altitude. Again, the only way to do that is to create a function to do it. You can see, I mean, if you're a programmer, you can see that this is painfully circuitous. And to do this in Lua code would be so much easier. But this, again, this function, um, altitude target delta, delta being difference, we get the altitude lock var, that's the pre-selected altitude from a sim connect var. We get indicated altitude, which is another sim connect var, subtract them, and uh, we want the absolute value of that because we don't know whether we're higher or lower. We can read it, we can see the current ver um, value of that by the way by clicking validate. So we're currently 37 feet away from the pre-selected altitude. If I just go and look at that, see if we really are. 8,600, 8,600. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you look at that, that's credibly 37 feet what it was at the time we read that. <laughs> yep, so there it is. If we just go back in, we'll, we'll see if that's doing anything useful. So when I was demonstrating that earlier and, and we saw it being somewhat inconsistent, I was pressing the buttons in the virtual cockpit. I will now do it using my hardware buttons. So we're on hold. We're holding 8,600 feet. We're on altitude mode. Altitude hold mode. If I click Alt to come off altitude hold, we're on vertical speed mode. If I click my hardware buttons to go into a an ascent, we want to go let's say 500 feet per minute. That seems to work fine if we look over here. Go back onto altitude hold. Second to settle. And click out again to go to vertical speed. Try an ascent again. No problem. Back onto altitude hold. Click out again, vertical speed mode, and click the down button. That seems to be working fine. If we just um, have a little bit closer look at that kind of hack we were doing on the pre selected altitude. So you'll, you'll see we've got pre selected now is 8,800 feet. When you, pr when you press the out button to capture the current altitude, it changes that pre selected value as well. So when I click Alt to go into vertical speed mode, because we're within 300 feet, because our actual altitude is within 300 feet of the pre-selected altitude, it's going to do that hack where it changes the pre-selected altitude by 300 feet. So let's say if I'm going to, if I go into vertical speed mode and then press the down button, the altitude pre-select should jump up by 300. <laughs> I hope you're following this. So there we go into vertical speed mode. I'm going to press the down button. If you watch that value there and this value up here, I'm going to press it now. So it went up from 88 to 92. That's 400. Um, maybe it was on 8900. I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to press capture again. Yeah, it was on 8900 because it crept up a bit. If I now press out to go to altitude, uh, vertical speed mode rather. 89, if we press the up button to dial in a vertical speed, that should, that pre-selected altitude should first jump down by 300, according to our hack. I'm going to press that now. And then just dial in my vertical speed. So it did, it did go down to 8600. There it is here as well. And you can see we're in that perpetual state of altitude alerted, uh, altitude alert, armed, because it auto arms, which, which we think is the problem. So there it is, long-winded explanation of something actually very simple. Uh, fixed two glitches with the autopilot to make it much more useful from your hardware controls. Using spad.next, you could do it with a lower code if you've got FSU IPC, you could probably do it with some other way of programming the, the sim. So that's all for today. Hopefully you found that useful, possibly even interesting. Should give you some ideas to sort out your own autopilot.